unit commitment under that brute force enumeration technique solved problem 1. There are three thermal generating units which can be committed to take the system load of 800 megawatt. The fuel cost data and generation operating limits data are given below. Obtain an optimum unit commitment using brute force enumeration technique. So, these are the three fuel cost function and the operating limits are given like this. So, in this problem we are going to use the brute force enumeration technique to solve the optimum unit commitment. In brute force enumeration technique, the number of combinations at each hour is given by 2 power n minus 1. For m period, the number of combinations will be 2 power n minus 1 power m, where n is number of units and m is total time period. Enough number of units will be committed to supply the load demand. Condition summation i equal to 1 to n pgi is less than pd, then the solution will be infeasible solution. So, d commit some generating units. So, the total generation is less than the demand that gives you infeasible solution, where pgi is power generation of ith unit and pd is the power demand. And if the total generation summation i equal to 1 to n pgi is greater than the demand pd then the solution become a feasible solution commit some generating units so these points we need to keep it in mind while solving the unit commitment problem using brute force enumeration technique solution step 1 find the number of combination so in this problem there are three units so the number of combinations at each hour will be given by 2 power n minus 1 where n is 3 here so, combinations will be 2 power 3 minus 1 which is 8 minus 1 that is equal to 7. So, the number of combinations equal to 7. Second step, draw the unit commitment table. So, draw the table like this. So, there are uh, 7 combinations considering the initial step. So, totally you will be having 8 serial numbers here and 3 units, unit 1, unit 2, unit 3 and uh, PG1, PG2, PG3 for 3 unit generation minimum limit and maximum limit and the solution then finally cost. So, first case all the units are in off condition. So, this is the initial condition. So, it is infeasible solution. Second one off, off and on. Unit 3 alone on. Third case off, on, off. Fourth case off, on, on. Fifth case on, off, off. Sixth case on, off, on seventh case on on off and eighth case on on and on all the three units are on so you can write this uh, combination based on the binary flow 0 0 0 and here it is 0 0 1 1 represents on and 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 so like that we can fill this table and in second case, unit 3 alone in on condition. In such case, we need to write the minimum and maximum value of generation. So, minimum for unit 3 is 150 and maximum is 500. And third case, unit 2 alone in on condition. So, in unit 2, the minimum is 50, maximum is 300. And fourth case, unit 2 and 3 are in on condition. So, adding the minimum value of unit 2 and 3, 50 plus 150 it is 200 and maximum value 300 plus 500 it is 800. Similarly, for fifth case, unit 1 is on, minimum is 100, maximum is 400 and the sixth case, unit 1 and 3 are in on position. So, unit 1 and 3, the minimum is 100 plus this 150, 250 and the maximum is 400 plus 500 which is 900. And seventh case, unit 1 and 2 are in on condition. So, 1 and 2 minimum is 150 and maximum is 400 plus 300 which is 700. And eighth case, all the three units are in on condition. So, adding all the minimum 100 plus 50 plus 150, 300 and 400 plus 300 plus 500 which is 1200. So, this is how we need to form the unit commitment table. And the demand given in the problem is 800 megawatt. Okay, now out of this uh, maximum values here 500, 300, 800, 400, 900, 700, and 1200, 
we need to select the feasible solution based on the demand so here the demand is 800 megawatt so using this 500 megawatt we cannot supply the demand so we, this 500 is infeasible so the megawatt which is greater than 800 megawatt that is feasible solution so we can say this case 4 is feasible solution using this 800 maximum 800 megawatt we can supply the load of 800 megawatt so it is feasible and case 6 is 900 so it is feasible and case 8 is 1200 which is also feasible so out of the seven combination three combinations are feasible remaining four are infeasible solution now we are going to consider the feasible solution one by one first consider the fourth case followed by sixth case and finally eighth case so step 3 consider the fourth case so case 4 unit 2 and 3 are operating the power demand will be 800 megawatt so in such case we are going to find lambda using the standard formula lambda equal to pd plus summation i equal to 1 to n bi by 2 ai divided by summation i equal to 1 to n 1 by 2 ai so here we are going to consider only unit 2 and 3 so i equal to 2 and i equal to 3 so here b2 by 2a2 plus b3 by 2a3 divided by 1 by 2a2 plus 1 by 2a3 so b2 b3 a2 a3 are taken from the cost function so coefficient of pg2 square is a2 and pg3 square is a3 and coefficient of pg2 is b2 and pg3 is b3 so substituting that values the demand is 800 and b2 is 8 divided by 2 into a2 plus b3 divided by 2 into a3 divided by 1 by 2a2 plus 1 by 2a3 that gives you 14 so lambda is equal to 14 next we are going to find the power generation pgi using the formula lambda minus bi divided by 2ai here second and third units are operating so pg2 and pg3 we need to find pg2 equal to lambda minus b2 by 2a2 substituting the value lambda is 14 minus b2 divided by 2 into a2 that gives you 300 megawatt and pg3 equal to lambda minus b3 by 2a3 substituting the value will be getting 500 megawatt so adding this two you will be getting the total demand of 800 megawatt check the limits also pg2 is 50 to 300 it lies within the limit and uh, pg3 is 150 to 500 it also lies within the limit at the maximum now find the cost of generation so cost of generation so representing the cost the fuel cost as f here so in this cost function c2 0 0.001 pg2 square plus 8 pg2 plus 400 in that substitute the value of pg2 which we calculated in the previous step 300 substituting you will be getting rupees 3700 similarly for the third unit c3 equal to 0 0.008 pg3 square plus 6 pg3 plus 500 in that substitute pg3 equal to 500 you will be getting rupees 5500 adding this two you will be getting the total fuel cost ft is equal to f2 plus f3 that gives you rupees 9200 so case 4 conclusion pg2 equal to 300 megawatt pg3 equal to 500 megawatt and total fuel cost is rupees 9200 now we are going to substitute these values in the unit commitment table so in the case 4 pg2 value is 300 and the pg3 value is 500 and the total fuel cost is 9200 now we are going to consider case 6 step 4 consider sixth case case 6 unit 1 and 3 are operating so the demand is 800 megawatt find lambda using the formula here we are going to substitute i equal to 1 and i equal to 3 so the formula become pd plus b1 by 2a1 plus b3 by 2a3 divided by 1 by 2a1 plus 1 by 2a3 substituting the values from the cost function you will be getting lambda equal to 12.057 next step find the power generation pgi using the formula lambda minus b1 by 2a1 for the first unit so you will be getting 421.416 megawatt and we are going to check with this limit so pg1 is 100 to 400 maximum megawatt will be 400 but we got the answer which is greater than 400 in such case the condition says that we need to equate the pg1 value to the maximum value so since the value we got is greater than maximum 
we need to equate that value to maximum. So PG1 is equal to PG1 max that is equal to 400 megawatt. So in this case unit 1 and 3 are running. So in unit 1 the power generation is 400. So the total demand is 800. So unit 3 will supply the remaining 400. So PG3 equal to PD minus PG1. So 800 minus 400 that gives you 400. Now find the cost of generation F1. So first cost function 0 0.006 into 400 square plus 7 into 400 plus 600 that gives you rupees 4360. And the third unit F3 is equal to we will be getting rupees 4180. Adding this two we will be getting the total cost of rupees 8540. So the conclusion of case 6 is PG1 equal to 400 megawatt. PG3 equal to 400 megawatt and the total fuel cost is rupees 8540. Substituting this value in the unit commitment table for the sixth case, PG1 is equal to 400, PG3 equal to 400 and the cost is 8540. Now we are going to see about the eighth case. In eighth case, all the three units are running. Unit 1, 2 and 3 are operating. The demand is 800 megawatt. Find lambda using the formula substituting i equal to 1, 2 and 3. All the three terms comes here. Substituting the values from the cost function, you will be getting the lambda value as 11.02. And next, find the power generation. So, PG1 is equal to lambda minus B1 by 2A1. You will be getting 335 megawatt. So, 335 is within the limit and PG2 151 megawatt which is also within the limit and PG3 314 which also lies within the limit. Now find the cost of generation. So F1 is substituting PG1 equal to 335 in the first cost function. You will be getting rupees 3618.35 and in the second cost function PG2 equal to 151 you will be getting rupees 1836.01 and in the third cost function substituting PG3 equal to 314 you will be getting rupees 3172.768. Adding this three cost you will be getting the total fuel cost as rupees 8627.04. So conclusion of the eighth case PG1 equal to 335 megawatt, PG2 equal to 151 megawatt and PG3 equal to 314 megawatt and the total fuel cost equal to rupees 8627.04. Substituting this values in the unit commitment table for the eighth case PG1 is equal to 335, PG2 equal to 151 and PG3 equal to 314 and the total fuel cost is 8627.04. So now out of this three feasible combination which combination is having a less cost that is the sixth case 8540 which is less when compared to other two cases this is the unit commitment solution so result the total fuel cost at case 6 is less compared to other two cases of the feasible solution so therefore it is preferable to run unit 1 and 3 to meet the load of 800 megawatt so this is the optimum unit commitment solution of the given problem using brute force enumeration technique.